We believe that Coach Durkin has been unfairly blamed for the dysfunction in the athletic department. And while he shares some responsibility, it is not fair to place all of it at his feet. I mentioned that the commission met for 10 hours with uh, Durkin, and, and it was very clear that they felt that his commitment to the players and to their success and their safety was absolutely genuine. I feel like I've been punched in the stomach and somebody spit in my face. Wow. Uh, Paul Feinbaum, good to have you with us. So basically what happened is Maryland has retained DJ Durkin, the head coach, after the investigation. And obviously that was Jordan McNair who passed away under the football program under Durkin's watch. And that was his father who rightfully feels punched in the stomach. I was absolutely shocked by this news, Paul. What was your reaction? Speechless. There's no words to describe uh, hypocrisy. Molly in college athletics, you see Ohio State retaining Urban Meyer when perhaps he should have been gone. You see this all the time. But, but in this case, uh, it defies logic. Uh, we've seen one school, SMU, get the death penalty from the NCAA. This is the first time I've ever seen a university give itself the death penalty because this school, as a football program, it's not a power, it's just a program, not, not a very good one, uh, is effectively done. Uh, they will not recover from this because in a year or two, Durkin will be fired, and the biggest issue will be recruiting because no one in their right mind will sign a letter of intent to go play football at the University of Maryland. Let me add also that there was a players' meeting, and several of the players walked out of that meeting when they heard this was happening. And justifiably so. Uh, this, this gentleman here who's in charge of the board talking about Durkin and, and the presentation he gave, all you need to know is, is what he did and how he conducted business. And, and so far, as best I know, only one person has lost his job. That's a strength and conditioning coach. And college football, pro football, that's always the, the, the strength and conditioning coach is locked in with the head coach. Mm -hmm. That's his right hand person. Uh, he does everything that the coach wants. So, yes. Uh, the problem, the problem for me with the Durkin situation is when you read about what goes on there and his style of coaching, it's like all the stupid old school stuff yeah. that people think toughens and so sure. tough and everything, but there are some people who actually know how to employ sort of old school tough love tactics and others who don't really understand what they're doing and aren't getting results from them. So, Paul, the only thing I can figure here, since they didn't get rid of the guy is maybe the university felt they couldn't fire him with cause and so they couldn't recoup his money and they need, they need the money. Otherwise, if, it's one thing if it's Nick Saban, right? And then you yeah. understand that sports people bend over backwards for winners. He's not a winner. No, and again, the, the legal minutia in this case, I, I'm, I'm not completely uh, sure why they would even take in that course because they will be firing him. Uh, I mean, there's just no getting around it. And there was cause. <laughs> I mean, the, the, I, I, sometimes there is a gray area. You just really don't know. It's, it's more of, a, of an overreaction. This was as clear as anything that I have seen in intercollegiate athletics. And, and, and let me say something real quick. Jordan McNair yeah. has lost his life. His yeah. father is saying it feels sure. like someone spat in his face. It is not disputed that protocol was not followed for heat stroke. I mean... It, what am I missing? And remember something. Wallace Lowe, the president, he stood up a couple of months ago, took all the responsibility and apologized, and they ran him out. Now they said, you fire him or you're fired, and essentially he, he announced he's resigning. He should have walked out right then. Um, and the, the athletic director who was over this program, he's retained as well, and the, this person a minute ago that we saw, the chairman of the board, talk, described Damon Evans as one of the greatest athletic directors in intercollegiate athletics. I mean, there, there's a disconnect there that I have never seen before. The father of Jordan McNair. Marty. Marty McNair. Along with the two players that went on Twitter and spoke out and the various other players that walked out, essentially are saying Jordan McNair's life didn't matter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what they're accusing Maryland of. Maryland is going to have to look in the mirror real hard because they're clearly wrong. And here's what the reality is. 
This coach, DJ Durkin, was six and seven his first year, four and eight last year. He's getting credit for their five and three record this year, even though he ain't coaching. It doesn't count. He wasn't on the sidelines. But so you got a six and seven record and a four and eight record for crying out loud. He's scheduled to be, he's making like $2.5, $12 million this year, according to USA Today. That ranks like 53rd in the nation, 12th in the conference, only ahead of head coaches at Rutgers and in Indiana. So he isn't the highest paid coach in the world or whatever. You want to say the Maryland's got some money issues or whatever the case may be. Uh, I, I'm not informed enough about their finances to know what the situation is, even though one could surmise that has, that has played a role in it. But here's my problem with Maryland. They seem to, be, to have the zest to come to the defense of Durkin. Of Durkin. That's what they seem to be doing here. In other words, we don't, find, we, we, we don't find them culpable. Well, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Because nobody's accusing him of that. Well. In, in our nation, usually when change takes place and things are impacted profoundly, it's usually because the younger generation steps up mm -hmm. and takes a stand. No question. And again, our heart goes out to the entire McNair family. Yes, it does. Uh, Paul, you'll be back with us in a little bit. And on a lighter note, we'll be talking the college football playoff, the first rankings coming out. Stephen A. has a message for the Green Bay Packers. You don't want to miss that coming up. And later in the show, Will Kane will explain why the Cowboys don't look so bad for giving up a first-round pick to get Amari Cooper after all yesterday's trades. It's First Take. Join us.